Hi, my name is Jose Antonio Aviña, and I'm running for mayor of Sacramento. There is a lot of things going on in the city. Uh, we have politicians who have been uh, dealing with the situation for several years now, and we're still in the same position. Uh, now they're asking for four more years to try to solve something they were promising to solve, you know, four or five years ago. So at this point, we need new, new ideas. Someone new to come in and say, hey, um, this is what we're going to do going forward. And we need somebody with you know, energy again. The one thing that I bring to the table is my military background. Uh, I don't have the political background like all my other opponents, nor have I served in a board. Uh, but what I do know is how to keep the country safe. I want to bring that same tenacity here to the city as well. Crime is on the rise, right? And um, we need somebody with the leadership ability to come in and say, you know, these are the standards that we must, as a society, uphold. And I understand that we live in a progressive society, and I, and I believe in some of those progressive ideas, and I support them. But the one thing that I'm asking the, the community is to give me the four years as an opportunity to put our city back on the right track, and I will give that position back to those individuals with those progressive ideas. And let's start now working towards building a community in their vision. But right now, I don't believe that they have the ability to put a stop to crime. They need to be harder on crime. I need individuals who will step up for the community and defend the community. Not say that they will do it, but actually, you know, put their actions into, into motion. This is home to me. Uh, this is the one place I know when I travel around the world for my military duties, uh, when I get on that plane coming back home, I look forward to coming home. I, I searched for home for a long time. Uh, and they say home is where the heart is, uh, but that's where my family and my friends are at. And this is home for me. My friends are here. Uh, the community that I built at the gym, it's, that's my family. And I love them to death. And you know, there's always that why. You, know, you, you ask, must ask yourself when you go overseas, what is your why? Your why must be strong enough to, to get you through anything. And my why is my friends and my family and this is my home. And as much as I uh, wanna help those overseas, I look back and I, I'm looking at our city and our, our state, and I'm wondering what's going on with our you know, local politics. And there's a problem. The fact that you have someone like myself saying, hey, let me put my career on pause real quick, and let me try to focus within my city first, and let me fix something. There's something obviously wrong, but we're not doing anything to fix it. And I'm not putting my military career on hold forever. I want to just do this job and I want to get back to my Marines and get back to doing the thing that I love most. But I want to make sure that I have a home to come home to. And that's important to me. This city has so much to offer. This is, you know, this was the end of the Oregon Trail. People would come here in hopes of finding a better life, right? This is the American dream. And I still believe in that American dream and I think that we can bring it back. And it's not gone, but we just need to look within ourselves and say, what is it that we want to leave for our future generations? Right? And I don't have children yet, but I hope that one day we can make the world a better place, a more peaceful place, and I can settle down and have kids. But right now, where the way things are, I, I don't see that happening anytime soon. So if I could you know, spend my energy and my time and my focus in my city, I will. And so this is why I want to give back to my community. We as property owners and uh, business owners downtown, we care for this community. Like, you know, uh, some of the comments that I've heard is that uh, I'm too far right because I'm pro-business. No, I, I am pro-business because I'm a business person. You know, I have a business. And I talk to my fellow business owners and we're all facing the same thing. We're, we're barely making it by. You know, and, and instead of having to invest, reinvest into our companies, we're having to spend more resources cleaning up the mess. And I'm compassionate towards the situation. I understand, I, I get what's happening. Um, and we want to help. We want to help them. We, we assist in any way we can. We do fundraisers. I have a fit for a cause where we raise uh, canned, uh, canned food goods, um, uh, what do you call it, blankets, pillows, uh, hygiene uh, products for male and female. You know, so it's, we, I, we give back. We want to help a lot. But the issue too is that we also want the city to do its part. And it's like we pay so much in taxes and we're wondering what is going on? Like, where is that money going to? You're taxing me $150 a month, but yet then, you know, the situation continues. The graffiti continues. So it's not just one um, demographic that's the issue. No, no, no. I don't think they're the problem at all. I think that the problem here is the politicians in office, right? I hold them accountable. 
because it is their responsibility as leaders. They took, they took that position. They wanted that position. They promised us that they took that position that they would look out for the well-being of others in the city, and they haven't done that. So I don't blame them for the situation. I blame those in charge, and I want to hold them accountable. But we also need to look at what's happening right now. There is a lot of individuals that are coming here because the weather is better, right? And there are more opportunities to hopefully put yourself back on your feet. And this, that should also be a beacon of hope for individuals, knowing that there, if, if you're down in your luck, go to Sacramento because there is an opportunity to get back on your feet. And I want people to continue to feel that way, right? Come here. I encourage you. Don't worry. I'm not afraid. I will, if you are down in your luck, come here and we will take care of you. We will do everything in our power to make sure that you have a house, you have food, and then you have uh, clothing, and then you have an ability to get back in there into the community and work again, right? And, and I'm not afraid to take on that challenge. I encourage individuals who are down on their luck, look to Sacramento as a beacon of hope, and I will show you that we can do it, right? But in this situation, what I'm seeing as a leader myself is that there's no accountability at the very top. No one has said, I, I'm responsible for this, for this problem, and I take full responsibility for the actions and inactions. That's all I want. Don't, don't push off the blame to someone else, a nonprofit organization, or you know, so-and-so did not handle the books appropriately. No, you signed that off. You gave us your promise. Please do your job. And if not, someone else is gonna come after your job. That's all I want, accountability. One of the immediate things we could probably do is looking at the short-term rentals. Airbnbs, right? Uh, those actually take up a lot of the available housing that we have in the downtown and the outskirts of the city as well. So questioning those property owners and wondering, what is it? Is that really truly your, your place of record, right? Your home of record? Or are you only using it for profit, right? Because there's, there's guidelines on Airbnb as well, that this must be your place that you live at and you're simply renting it out for the time that you're not there. It's not supposed to be a full-time rental property. If that's the case, then I fully encourage you to go buy land somewhere else and do that, right? But downtown, this is for working people. We need this, these homes because we need to get to work, right? We, we're the working class. We need to be able to get up, go to work, from the work, go to the grocery store, from the grocery store, go home or to any other activity. But now if you force us out because we don't have the ability to afford the housing downtown, we're not gonna keep that money circulating from, you know, within downtown. That's something that we're missing. Um, one of the other things is, you know, holding some of those uh, property portfolio investment companies accountable as well. Uh, I just spoke to a gentleman who sold uh, a couple properties to um, an outside investment firm, right? But they have no plans to do anything with that property for another six years. Well, okay, well, what was the reason in that purchase, right? Are you holding on to that property because you want to balance your books? right? Because the property in California is much higher. So you're simply going to use that as, as a uh, tax write-off on your loss. Okay, well, that doesn't benefit the community at all. Yes, you promised to build something in six years, but we don't need it in six years. And then by the time you decided to start building, it's going to take you another six years to get everything you need to build that. So we're looking at 15 years from now. We might be long gone from that, right? So we need action now. We need to look at the, the available housing that we do have now. And then Question those individuals who are in possession of those property. Are they doing it? Are they holding on to those properties because they want to invest in our community? Or are they holding on to those properties because they want to use what we have, little that we have, as a write-off for their own taxes? And I want to put people over profit. I'm sorry, but the corporations that, you know, they made a killing over during COVID. And that COVID was one of the main reasons why we have a lot of people who are on house today. Many people lost their jobs during COVID, but the corporations made a killing, right? And I'm sorry, but they had their chance, now it's the people's turn. That's a tough one, right? Because uh, people watch what's going on, on on TV and social media, and when you have individuals posting about, you know, this robbery is happening right here, right now, that's gonna be more powerful than a stat. Yes, the stat may say that crime is going down, but if people are witnessing this on social media and it's a very powerful tool nowadays, then that doesn't give us any uh, confidence within our own community in terms of safety, right? And that doesn't attract business nor tourism. And when companies or uh, organizers are looking at where to host maybe a convention or anything, 
uh, they look at the safety within the city too. So we're losing out on that opportunity to, to bring in that, uh, that revenue. Those are opportunities we're missing out. In terms of um, the retail theft, it's organized crime. And that's another thing that we have to look at uh, in how the, the police department set up uh, to counter those measures. This is something that's a much larger uh, problem. I think it's more on the federal level as well. So we need to talk to our federal agencies and have them assist us and also have open communication. You know, they might have intel that we don't know about. And, I, and I'm telling you this from the military side of the house. <laughs> there, there are times where there's intel that's just not shared because you're just not asking the right questions. Um, or um, they just may not be able to share it with you directly, but you know, they can allude to it. Um, but we need to, we need to figure out the, the right form to request that information so that we can um, observe and report on those individuals who are organizing these crimes because those individuals are putting others out there to go commit the crime and deterring us from the bigger picture that the cartel or someone else might actually be pushing these buttons. We need to go after them. Right? And again, when we look at crime and theft, it really comes down to lack of opportunity within those communities. There would be no reason for anyone to go and steal something if they had the ability and the means to go and purchase them themselves. So obviously we're failing our community as well. And then now they're receptive to these individuals who come to them and say, hey, if you go out there and you commit this, bring us all this um, you know, merch that you, that you got and we'll sell it for you and then you'll get a cut of that. So th there is a big problem there too. Facebook market space, right? Um, offer up all those little things we need to start looking into and working with those companies and making sure that, hey, if, if an item seems questionable, we need to know about it as well because that product was stolen from our area and it's affecting our local economy. And that bottom line is gonna affect someone's job. And if, that, if one person loses their job over this, that's one too many. If one person loses their life over this, that's one too many. So we need to just, again, accountability and making sure you take a hard stance against those organized crimes. And that's where I come in. I'm not afraid to go toe to toe to them. You think that a Marine's gonna back down from a challenge like that? I, no, I bring it. We need to get to work. There's a lot of things we need to do. We have fallen behind. We talked about climate change uh, yesterday during one of the debates. Uh, there are a lot of things that climate is going to affect our local economy in ways that we're not prepared for. Another thing that I really want to focus on more than anything else is reinvestment to our youth. Let's create youth programs so that they have the ability and the know-how so that when they become of age, they can run for public office and they could start taking over. And you know, because as we've learned in my, my short period of time and just running for this uh, position, uh, it takes a long time to get anything approved. You're talking eight to 15 years. And you know, sometimes depending on the project, 20 years. So let's give them the tools necessary so that they can start planning and creating the city for themselves in the future. Because right now we're building, but we're building for 30 years from now. And so if we gave them all the resources necessary, they can help solve the problems of tomorrow. But unfortunately we put, again, profit over people. There's no immediate return in investing in our kids. But there is a long-term dividend if we just put a little bit of time and effort into ensuring that they have all the resources necessary to be creative and, and, and dream about building things that, and, and you know, if they fell along the way about trying to build that um, or create that business, we're there to pick them back up and show them, okay, this is where maybe you went wrong. Try it again. Fail again, it's okay. It may take a thousand times, but a thousand and one, you're gonna get it. And that's gonna be the thing that's gonna save the society, All right? So we need to think about the big picture. There are a lot of things going on. And if we wanna solve um, the situation with the low wage and unhoused and uh, uh, what do you call it? access to uh, livable communities, we need to give them the tools to start building that, right? We need to give them the access to resources to bring in those jobs, to, you know, start building those apps, start creating those uh, small businesses that are gonna bring in those tech jobs from within, or maybe create them from within. Um, I believe in investment in our youth. I, I came from a community uh, uh, that was uh, down south that was not the best, and there were a lot of good youth programs. I'm a product of that youth program. I got to go to the state of California years ago for a young governor's uh, convention, 
And as a selectee from the Boy Scouts, uh, that was one of the greatest opportunities. I spent two years up here learning how to make policies, write policies, and then sat in the chamber for one of the, uh, the voting things. So that's important. That, I'm not sure if that kind of led me to this position here today, but I guarantee you that led me to the Marine Corps. And that led me to a position where I am today as a Marine Corps captain. And who knows where I would have been without it. So I think that if we invest in our youth, you might get something back. In high school, I was part of a, um, a military uh, training program, right? It was an ROTC training program. And, and the, again, the, the high school that I came from wasn't the greatest, right? The area that I came from wasn't the greatest. The ROTC program gave me a lot of opportunities. It gave me the discipline, the structure. Um, and growing out of that, that community, there was three options. You either, A, you go work for Home Depot or Walmart, who was getting bigger at then. Uh, the docks, or you go work on the shipping docks, or you go work for the cartel. And I wasn't going to have either one of them. And so I decided to join the Marine Corps, and I called up my parents, and I told them that, you know, I'm shipping out in two days. And they weren't happy about it, but, you know, I, I chose what I chose, and um, I haven't looked back since. It, it gave me a purpose in life. It gave me a family, and it gave me something uh, to be proud of. Uh, and I've been giving back to the Marine Corps since then. Uh, they chose me to... Uh, to become an officer, and that was one of the greatest opportunities in my life. Uh, they, and that's a title that I, I hold near and dear to my heart. I'm a Mustang. Um, I came from the ranks, and I was given an opportunity to go to selection, and I was fortunate enough to get selected to become an officer, and then I went and went to uh, the officer's uh, candidate school. My Marine Corps career has made me who I am today. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the Marine Corps. I wouldn't be sitting here in front of you if it wasn't for the Marine Corps. And it's uh, one of the things that I feel is an obligation that we must all as citizens fulfill, but not everyone wants to, and it's okay. Um, but it, we at least have a duty to our community and to our country to give back. Uh, I am a captain with uh, Third Anco. Uh, it's an air, naval, gun liaisons company. And what we do is we specialize in assisting our allies and our other branches and bringing the power, the firepower, of the United States Arsenal. Mm -hmm. And so we have uh, specialized individuals who specialize in various different things, and we have the capability to do air insertions, water insertions, line insertions, depending, whatever the job is, we can get it done. Uh, but we're a, um, a small detachment group, and I, I'm in charge of six different teams. Each team has six individuals, and each team is led by one captain or a major. So, um, and right now, I now just been actually taken from one of my positions to give myself a little bit more free time to run for this position as well. So my, my unit's fully aware and supportive of this as well.